This is FFPÖ, your primary source for Austrian film and TV critique, where two minds come together to take apart the work of people who actually matter. Welcome back to a new episode of FFP. My name is Paul and this is the 34th episode on the 30th of March 2017. And we have a new fabulous co-host with us. It is... Sonja Picard. Hi Hello. Sonja. Thank you <laughs> for being here. Thank you for having me. Yes, this was great. You, you got up early. <laughs> yeah, the I comedian's did, life doesn't normally start before before noon My and life, you came yeah. here at 10 in the morning like okay yeah, i'm ready i'm ready to do this and you didn't didn't know anything basically about the podcast right i had no idea what we were gonna do <laughs> but it was fun so far yes yes i had, I had some I had, I had a good time too so far so far so far <laughs> because this, <Let's> see. <laughs> we we definitely have have one of, when it comes to subject one of the heaviest movies so far we did yeah. like we picked something you wanted something new and unique and i had like yeah, i have i have this war crime movies <laughs> this german uh, american war crime movie from the 70s how about that and you're like yeah okay and then before that we had two war movies and they were like three hours long mm -hmm. one of them was three hours long and the other one was two hours and 40 minutes this is still a long movie this was still very long yes, yes. Mm -hmm. but i wasn't bored me neither yes yes this so what we covered we covered the odessa file a 1974 Four. movie starring john white uh, Maximilian Schell and Maria Schell for some reason. In a minor. Why, why, why does Maria Schell get better billing than Sigi? I, I like she no has, idea. she has like what, 20 seconds of 20 screen? 20 seconds, maybe two lines. That's yes, it. yes. She doesn't have anything. Yeah, to she do. gets locked up by her own daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Opens his door, yeah. <laughs> I think it was the beginning of her career, maybe. Oh, no, 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 no. She, she, was she, she famous back then? Yeah, she's the, the sister of Maximilian Schell. Yeah, but was yeah. she already... Yeah, yeah, they were both famous basically at the same time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. she's a bit younger than him, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but still, yeah, crazy, crazy oh, well. stuff, crazy <laughs> stuff. Now, uh, so it is a... Is it a spy movie? Is it a revenge movie? Well, how would you classify this movie? Because I'm, I'm going to look up... You could put it under the broad umbrella of drama, I guess. Yeah, probably. But I'd say it's a very good mixture. That's what I like about it. It's it's actually yeah. a little bit of everything. You have right. the spy theme in there. Drama though... thriller, according to IMDb. Okay, uh, yeah. okay. Thriller, definitely. Like, it has some really intense scenes in yeah, there. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but also... I wouldn't call them comic relief <laughs> scenes. I think we just lighter took scenes. It as yes, well. yeah, we yeah. were like, oh man, there's like genocide going on and like shitty Germans being shitty, which we really can relate to. <laughs> oh, you said that. Yeah, no, no. I mean, in general, just from the from the 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 we are now the second generation that mm -hmm. had like real history taught to us because our grandparents didn't get it or, or uh, didn't say anything about that time then we had our like the, the in between the baby boomers and then yeah. and then and then it's already our parents and in the 70s and 60s there were already enough young teachers around so that that actual the actual history of the second world war was taught and not yeah even though like like it still wasn't good because my mom, for example, history in her class basically stopped with the First World War. Like they, really? they drew it out so long that they never got to the Second World War. That's that's how oh, th no. that was the workaround back then. Oh my God, that's yes. so sad. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, my mother is Dutch. Ah, so, ah. Um, ah that explains the, the height and all. <laughs> the height and the what? <laughs> The, the, the general demeanor no i don't know i don't know it's just you look very cliche for, for cliche dutch yes yeah, yeah i do yeah yeah i'm half dutch yes only, uh, mm -hmm. i've 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 uh, a dutch great grand uncle 
Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yes. So, so yeah, and he, he could be your father <laughs> or your grandfather, I guess. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they all look the same. Yes, and I was in Amsterdam <laughs> and everything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they they all look alike. <laughs> It's oh all the God. it's all those fries and 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 it's the fries. Uh, it's the fries. Okay. Yeah. No, that's all like Denmark has fries, right? Um Belgium has fries. They have a Denmark ton. Denmark has fries. I think they have a, a fry speci- speciality. The Germans definitely, the North Germans have, definitely have some fry dishes. Mhm. Yeah. But Sp- so the Belgians and the Dutch are actually famous. For yeah, them. exactly. So Which is weird because they're slim. Yeah. How? Yeah, how? How, how on yeah. earth would you be slim if you <laughs> yes. just keep eating that, fries that, all day? That diet, the Belgian diet, especially with the waffles and everything. And the like, chocolate? I would kill myself accidentally, basically, after <laughs> six months or something <laughs> like that. Because I can't, I don't know, I fell asleep with like a food sleep when you had too much food and you just fall asleep and I fall into the syrup of, of the waffle and just suffocate. <laughs> that's, I'm, that's how I go out in, in, in Belgium, basically. Nice that's, my, that's my... Here it's safe. If you fall into a palachinki, there's no sauce. Maybe vanilla, there, well, I guess. Yeah, there might be some. But I don't, uh, I don't fuck jam. around. Yeah, the jam is not syrupy enough to, you know. You think you wouldn't plug. suffocate on the jam? <sighs> also, the the pancakes are thinner. The palachinki is very thin, so there's not enough buffer zone, I guess. Oh, uh, you might blow a bubble into yeah, it with yeah, your own yeah, breath. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. I get it. <laughs> very so intricate, nice. very intricate, uh, sweet stuff uh, talk here. But let's go back. Yeah, let's, let's, go, let's go back. Let's, go let's back get to the back to, to, to the to the to the very sad stuff. So John White plays Peter Miller. I guess his real name would be Peter Müller. Exactly. Yeah. Which is already weird that everybody speaks with a German accent in that movie, and yes. it's an English movie, and it feels kind of it's like Seven Years in Tibet. Yeah, All totally. All this time you're thinking, why right. do you speak with that accent? Yeah, that wasn't Austrian, technically. It wasn't even Austrian. If if it had been good, <laughs> but it was just something. Yes, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it starts with him being in Hamburg. Oh, let's go to our first segment, I guess. Yes, and of that's course. Plot. I'm editing that later. <laughs> um, so, Israel. Yes. Oh sh- shit! Right. It starts, it starts with in it. Israel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, never go back. Well, at the end, like I guess that's the full circle thing. You go to a militarized Israel and then the peaceful Israel that is now safe. I guess that's. I think the Im- imagery that they wanted to evoke with that whole full circle thing. Okay. Yeah. I guess. Probably. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. because it starts with a uh, with with uh, the uh, military action against Egypt. I guess. It are those are those Israelis? I think those are Israelis. I, they didn't make it too clear. Yeah. Who was the who insignia? In that there was no clear insignia no. on the on the uniforms or anything or any in- imageries like a flag or something. I didn't see any of that. So, let's go with. Oh, because they were talking about the missile guidance system, and about the weapons, that the we- the rockets that would obliterate. About the Israel. targets, they were actually talking about the targets, like Haifa. Yes, Tarifa. so I guess they're Egyptians. Not Tarifa, that's in Spain, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, no, accidentally uh, bombed this. Uh, <laughs> I typed in the wrong address into the, into the, into the missile guidance system. Oops, <laughs> Egypt accidentally starts a war with Spain. <laughs> sorry you about that. You should have learned geography more yes. before bombing a yeah, stage. Does that American education system, God damn it. <laughs> Um, no, so they, they um, yeah, they were talking about high priority targets, about the missile system, to eradicate and, that, all of and that they have eight weeks or something like that uh, until the guidance system is finished in Germany um, to put be put into the rockets that would deliver. I think it was uh, some biochemical agents, like it was some plague, bubonic plague. Classic, oh, yes. classic, right. classic plague. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the other one was. Um, I can't recall. I think some radioactive material, something like that, thorium or something like mm-hmm. that, something really, really oh, nice. Oh no, strontium. St- yeah. Was it strontium? Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. 
right there. Awesome. That's why I have a co-host. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons. Also, it would be awkward just to talk alone with about a movie like this. I don't know. I don't feel comfortable. You should try it once. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> I just Paul episode. I don't Aww. know. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, but after the Israel scene, we see Peter in Hamburg driving around being the freelance uh poor guy reporter that he poor guy reporter that trying he to is, look for a but story he still drives a mercedes mercedes for some reason like he doesn't budge on that but i guess his his not non-wife is supporting him his because non -wife. Th because that flat was that flat was dope that they were living in yeah, that was, was a really nice flat i think as a stripper back in those times he would have earned a lot yeah yeah, there was no internet. You couldn't look it up. Yeah. There was no pu public access nude on the TV at that point. You had still had the... I think watershed laws even didn't apply back then. There was a high demand yes. for strippers. Yes, yeah. Very, <laughs> very high demand in strippers. Yes, exactly. And We that, desperately need strippers. Yes. <laughs> strippers... <laughs> I went to I, right after school. I went to stripper stripper academy. Yeah, I heard it. I have very good prospects. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I went to IMS and they told me you have to be a stripper. Yes. everybody's looking for strippers right now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, and that's what she did. Yeah, exactly. And she she so he goes to the scene of a supposed crime. It was actually a suicide? Was it actually? I think it was actually a suicide. You don't really know. Yeah. They, they never reveal it, but that he might have been killed yeah, too. Yeah, because the Nazis were in the police force already. And at that probably point. aware of him writing something. Maybe. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, there's, a, there's a, at least a chance that he was killed by, by, by Nazis. Mm -hmm. And they. Um, he. he doesn't really pay attention to it, Peter. He just leaves. He actually wants the story about the suicide, but then again, John F. Kennedy had just been assassinated. Killed, so yeah. he figures that if he makes a story about it, nobody will give a shit because yeah. JFK is so much more important. So Right. And then he actually leaves. Yeah. And then it, it's not until like a couple of days later that he is given that diary. Right, yeah, totally. By that guy where I don't really know what his position was in the whole thing. I think it was a friend or yes, something. Yes, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, like, again, as a reporter, he probably had contacts and yeah. friends that helped him out with gathering, gathering information. And so he gets uh, the, diary. the diary, which is was in police custody, but somehow he got his fingers on it. And he starts to read it and realizes it, it, he was a, a concentration camp survivor who wrote down the, the events of, of that concentration camp and one person really pops up in that story which gets it's going to be very important for the whole plot even though they really save him up till the end yes uh, for except, a long time except for flashbacks except for flashbacks yeah right. and that's uh roschmann eduard roschmann sturmbandführer nein sturm ss uh, Hauptmannführer. Haupt, Haupt, ja. <laughs> Feldwebel, Hauptmarschall. Yeah. Super uh, long something. title, yeah. very German, very SS. <laughs> and he is portrayed as a real monster. A real monster that, that killed thousands and thousands of Jewish and other non-essential people, basically, in, in that concentration camp in Riga. Yes. And also wouldn't obey the orders by somebody else. Yeah that he shot uh, during and well he the ss does have superiority yeah like I if they have the same rank i think and one of them is ss and the other one is just wehrmacht ss has uh superiority like so the guy that he killed should have had yeah no shouldn't have had command shouldn't have had command yeah okay like the, that was the because he says that I give the orders here. Yeah, yeah. That, but was, that was wrong. But I think it was end of the war. They heard the mortar fire from the from the Russians. Mm -hmm. So I guess command structure was crumbling, and he mm -hmm. wanted to save his own ass yeah. and that of the, his people because the SS had way less people. They wanted to ship out what? Apparently, they wanted just to flee. The German Wehrmacht mm -hmm. wanted just to get their their wounded to safety. Yeah. That was the difference. Mm -hmm. Like. 
people always forget the SS were the ones that like the Wehrmacht definitely had their atrocious things too but the SS were specifically designed for war crimes basically yeah like their whole goal was to n break every Geneva convention basically yes. mm -hmm. yeah so <laughs> so he's definitely way worse than the Wehrmacht guy definitely definitely yeah and ends up killing him. Yes, yeah, shooting him in the back like a fucking Coward. rat. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, that also, I think, establishes the kind of person that he is. Mm -hmm. He's not only cruel, but he's also a coward. Yes. Yeah, which is very important later, I think. And so um, he gets intrigued by the story uh, about the... the, the um, Roshman. Yeah, about Roshman and about the Jewish person who wrote it and he starts to investigate basically right that's yes. that's that's, that, the, that's the one the... that's the start of the whole whole thing yeah. and but investigation turns out to be very difficult yes because the first thing that he gets a whole well he he checks the archives basically yeah. in hamburg of the state prosecutor of war crimes Mm -hmm. Because the apparently, war crimes. well, it makes sense for Germany to have, like, in a city to have their own war crime department, basically. Of course. Because, yeah, well... Actually, it even looks like a very tiny room. You would imagine it to be bigger than that. Oh, yeah, yes, it should be bigger. It should at least yes, be bigger than but that. But we find out why that is, because the guy who is in command there is definitely a Nazi as we find out like immediately because he has a, a an invitation card by to, the Division Siegfried was yeah it? Di yes. Division F Siegfried yeah mm -hmm. exactly which is definitely a cover name for for uh, a neo-nazi group it even has the dagger with the with the fist on it like a really good symbol as well would you speak of neo-nazis in that time already? Yes, because there was no Nazi Na National Socialist Party anymore. Yeah. So they were already, they were old Nazis, but they were already yeah. reorganized in a new command structure and everything that wasn't official, which makes them new Nazi, I guess, kind supposedly. Of, I think the term wasn't coined until the 1990s The or something. thing though is that yeah. it says in the description new Nazi movement. So. Oh, does it? Yeah, okay. so, I guess. Oh, yeah. okay, fair enough. That, for the time, they were very neo. <laughs> yeah. For the time, they were very neo. Very progressive. Neo. Very uh, progressive. Very avant-garde. Yes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very sly in how they used words. Because John White then crashes that C uh, Division Secret party, which is in uh, the Hanseaten uh, Hanseaten Keller. Keller. Yeah, which is like one of the most... Nazi things that you can do is collect all your bodies in a in a cellar so that nobody can hear you celebrate <laughs> how great Germany is by With drinking a shit ton of beer <laughs> out of Bavarian beer mugs some of them some of them yes yeah. but yeah you're right you're right that was um, that's just not cool you don't drink <laughs> why you don't drink beer up in north in only from a glass mug right yeah only glass yeah you don't have the Steingut. No, you don't yeah. have that. Klinker brick, I think it's called. Klinker brick. I think Klinker brick. Yeah. Really? Because, uh, well, the I'm material. German, I've only the seen it in material Munich. is, I think, called Klinker brick. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm really, Whatever. really drawing from memory that it's very, <laughs> very far away. So, um, he gets beaten up. Well, discovered because. Who's there? The guy who got the invitation. Of course he's oh, there. Of course he's there. And he's one of the main guys who sits up front and he discovers him because he's in the audience and he's a real... That was the one time where he acted very irrationally, I think. He could have been at the at the back of the... Some hiding somewhere. Yeah. Sitting down at least, like at the least rest of the down. guy. Yes. Like, hide your camera. Yeah. Do something. You're not on an official event. This is a closed party. Party. Yeah. And you should know by the insignia and everything and all the stuff that you say that you. He, he li tries to cover it up by singing when they already found out that he took pictures. So stupid. He yes. has the word journalist written all over him. Yeah. Like, this is a threat to our community. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then he gets beaten up, only beaten up and thrown out. And uh, his non-wife, Sigi... Girlfriend. Girlfriend. Well, they are more than girlfriend and boyfriend. 
fiancés, maybe. Maybe there's no ring. Uh, did you pay attention to that? Yeah, he never took a ring off or had one on. It was really? never. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's ringless. Maybe they don't have rings. All right. There are people like that. Yes. Right. I heard. And and maybe it's like for her profession too. Like as maybe a stripper. Maybe it's better as a stripper yeah. not to have a wedding ring. <laughs> yeah. Or it's better. I don't know. For protection, maybe yeah. better for. For the show, maybe not. Not, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or if she like does a cool trick with the ring, maybe I don't know. I think you wouldn't see <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, where is it? She has like a whole show with yeah. that wedding ring. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it behind your ear? No. <laughs> see it behind your other ear. Um. <laughs> um. Okay. Enough of back to back to the <laughs> back to the plot because this is a dense plot. It is like they yes. don't waste any time. Basically, you need the long shots and the mm. intense exposure time with where's the thriller part and the rest is really dramatic in 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 setup and everything. And yeah, again, oh, there was an after that they they tried to kill him by pushing him in front of a train, uh, which they don't succeed. No, because even in those times there were these uh, gaps yeah. between the platform smart. and the actual train. Very smart. smart. You yeah, can and hide out there. And it, it doesn't have the exposed third rail like in the US mm -hmm. where it just fall down and you're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actual safety, guys. Actual safety. Yeah. Yeah, and they the 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 they, they were really fast response time from the from the officials to get him out. Nothing basically happened except for his his girlfriend who was really rattled by the mm -hmm. by the assassination attempt and uh, he tries to comfort her but he also says that he has to leave basically he seems very much into that story already yeah she really doesn't understand why he's so obsessed with it we don't understand either nobody basically. really understand but the, the, like again, the, initial in, the initial motivation for us as the viewer is that he's a reporter and he follows the story and he really needs it yes yeah. and he needs the money even though his mm -hmm. his girlfriend makes a shit ton more but he well he would feel threatened by that eventually yes don't you think i mean if, yeah kind of I, I, like i can't imagine myself in that situation because I would be a great stay-at-home dad. <laughs> I can sew, I can cook, I can clean. I loved all that stuff, you know? So okay. I love kids in a platonic way. <laughs> and oh my god. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But go on. Yeah, still. I'm 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 uh, um I'm not closed up to the idea that that the woman or the guy in the relationship with mm. me would um, most or, most or all of the money. I'm I'm totally cool with that. But you uh, weren't born in the forties. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Yeah. So he still has some real good old fashioned values mm -hmm. about how who should earn more money, basically. And yeah, and that's why he risks his life. <laughs> that's it. what we think. <laughs> that's what we think at, at that point. Spoiler alert. Yes. Well, again, it's a forty year old. 45 year old movie it i think spoiler is over at this point <laughs> i think we're done with that but still if you if you listen to this first and you haven't seen the movie yet oh well, yeah then you won't watch the movie much. watch the movie watch the movie first. definitely that's already a recommend at this yeah. point we mm -hmm. can already say that that it's, it's a, a really cool movie yes yeah. definitely mm -hmm. um so he follows up the lead he goes to vienna to uh to Did find I? simon wiesenthal yes exactly mm -hmm who, I don't know, was he played by Simon Wiesenthal? No, he was played by somebody else. Oh, okay, good. Uh, you, you, you remember yeah. that. Excellent. Okay, because that would have been a great cameo. If yeah, Simon that would Wiesenthal... would have been so cool. Yeah, if he was yeah. himself, that would have been amazing. <laughs> who do, for all the guys and girls out there who don't know who Simon Wiesenthal is, my viewership is relatively relatively young. So Simon Wiesenthal was, a, was also called the Nazi hunter, um, he was a very successful uh, concentra concentration camp survivor uh, after the Second World War. He had, well, he exposed the new identities and old identities of collaborators and Nazi camp, uh, like all the war crime people, basically. <laughs> all the good guys. All the good guys. All the nice guys. All the nice guys yeah. get, yeah, yeah exactly. 
uh, get rounded up. Um, and Simon Wiesenthal was very instrumental in, in keeping, in also reminding the Austrian and Germans that there was still so much residual from the Nazi regime in their own. Like, because we turned a blind eye to that, like, immediately. Mm -hmm. Austrians especially, like, oh yes, we yeah. were the first victims of the war, yeah. yes, oh. We totally didn't do anything. Sorry. Well, now the war is over. Let's not talk about it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what? What? I just woke up. It was like seven <laughs> years ago, right? There was a, like a vote or something and then nothing for seven years. And Simon Wiesenthal was very instrumental in keeping that, that alive, that remembering and what the Austrian and German people did to, to basically the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, with some collaboration from a few other people, but still, yeah. In total, definitely um, um, a very, very important figure in Austrian history in general and just an amazing man. Dead now, but yeah, kept working until basically his last days. Yeah, uh, so he seeks the help of Simon Wiesenthal, who was at that moment already a, a famous man. Mm -hmm. And uh, he tries to bribe a postal officer. With to get 100 shillings. Shilling. Yeah, Isn't which, that cute? Yeah, which even in 1974 is not, not that enough. much. Not <laughs> that much, yeah. But it, I think it shows that he still is strapped for cash. Yeah. Yeah, I think exactly. that was also to show like he uses up all his money and mm -hmm. all his effort to get to Vienna, to get to Simon Wiesenthal and he runs out basically. Yeah. And he, I think he's too prideful to ask money from his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So that also very smartly written, I think. The, the hundred shilling and that doesn't work. So yeah. uh, like in a roundabout way, he finds out where Simon Wiesenthal lives and seeks out his help directly, mm -hmm. which he provides um, because he um, gives him basically a lesson on how Odessa... Oh, right. We didn't say that. Uh, Actually, is that the first time? Yeah. That oh, no. Oh, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. We, we're going to take a quick break and be right back. And we're back. Hello. S sorry for the short interruption. But um, yeah, we were at Simon Wiesenthal who uh, explains to Peter what Odessa is basically, which is a neo-Nazi group, I guess. Yeah, basically a group of former SS Even proto, officers. proto neo Nazi because it was still formed at the end of the war. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. while the war still was going on, the, the SS already figured out that the war was lost and had like a basically a plan B. Backup plan. Which is always a good idea, yeah, right? Very smart, yeah, very, very smart. smart. Again, the villains in this one are really, really thorough. Smart. Really smart and really thorough. Mm -hmm. Like, they discovered that he was a threat immediately and tried to kill him mm -hmm. by pushing him in front of a train, which didn't work out. And that's fine that they retreated from that attempt and did try something else. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased by that, how, how they... How, how the villains work. They weren't incompetent fools. Yeah. It wasn't like a really smart boss and a very incompetent henchman. They were all really thorough in what they did, basically. It makes absolute sense. Yes. yes. It and seems that's, very realistic. And I that's like that about very it. nice to see in a thriller. And that mm -hmm. really also adds to the excitement when you have a formidable foe. Mm -hmm. And it's also so nebulous because you never, he never knows where they sit. He, Simon Wiesenthal says there are hundreds, maybe thousands of them out there. And they're all over the world, by yes. the way. It's not yeah. just Germany Like a Austria. spider's web. Like a spider's web. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it grows in the dark <laughs> or something. He, he had a really nice... Um, metaphor. Metaphor for mm -hmm. it, yeah. Um, again, Simon Wiesenthal, very eloquent guy as well. He, he spoke he spoke in very formidable <laughs> he did yes and um, so he brings him to the idea that uh, he should find the forger who manufactured all the fake passports for the NS officers uh, SS officers mm -hmm. so logically um, um, the butcher would show up. Of course, if he finds out who uh, made the fake made passports, yeah. because, oh yeah, 
Simon Wiesenthal knew that he was at least alive in 1947 mm -hmm. and that he was also alive a year ago, I think, or something like that, because there was a picture of him. There was a picture, yeah. exactly. Uh, and no, it was not the one who also told him that uh, Solomon Tauber had seen him a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. <gasps> right. Who was the one who told him that? Oh, fuck. Uh, was that his friend? I think. Oh no! We that's totally we totally skipped on the Jewish friend. The Jewish friend. The old guy. Yeah, the old guy. Yeah. When they're talking and then, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a scene in between. Again, very dense movie. We're like not even half into this movie no, right now. No. <laughs> We're not even half into this movie. So okay, we we have to we yeah, have to we, we have to, to speed this up. Mm -hmm. So Peter. Um, tries to find the forger but to find uh, he gets in the meantime he gets uh th threatened again by by the odessa contact man dr schmidt or schultz dr schmidt yes his schultz was his cover name i think something that like that might be possible yeah but so he's the one dr who, who schmidt tells him that rochman is actually dead yeah which of course is not true yeah because it says that he's the wrong date so he definitely so Yes, the sighting was never confirmed. The, mm -hmm. the recent sighting was never confirmed. The, yeah. the one in 1947 was very much confirmed. And the doctor mm -hmm. said it was 1945 that he died. And he was like, yep, so that makes sense that he's now, because he was he still alive in 47, mm -hmm. then he lies also about the other thing. So his Roshman is still yeah. very much... Eduard, Eduard is still mm -hmm. very much alive. And Peter Müller is... a. Uh Quite a smart guy. Yes, as we found out now. Yes, that that was really some good uh, in the moment, mm -hmm. spur of the moment improvisation to get some information out of the other guy, and then he gets kidnapped by the uh, by the Mossad, the Israel 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 uh, Secret Service, basically. They're, 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 they're an intelligence agency slash secret service. They have more than one capacity. The Mossad is very, very, very secretive about what they actually do and what they don't. But they actually look like a bunch of bohemian artists. Oh, yes. Oh, hiding yeah, yeah. in a basement, making plans. That, of that's, very, that's very much true, especially because you can actually see a Mossad agent in Vienna every day. He's in front of the um, remaining... Um, um, uh, God damn it! The Jewish temple in the first district. Really? There's always one Mossad agent posted in front of it. Really? Just in case that. of hate crime, you know. Oh yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, but yes, that's a Mossad agent always. Okay. So you, they also fulfill those duties, and they always look very plain. The only thing that they have is the that they're dressed in nice suits and have like that security earpiece. Uh -huh, yeah. That's the only way how you can di differentiate Tell them from the rest. Mm -hmm. Very cool. But yes, so the Mossad kids kidnaps him because they don't really know what he's up to because he visited Wiesenthal, but he also had contact with that Odessa agent, so mm -hmm. they don't know what his deal is. And also, as a viewer, you don't really know if they are with him or against him for yes. quite some time, which makes yeah. it very interesting. Yes. Uh, taking aside the very lame kidnapping itself. The kidnapping <laughs> scene is like the worst scene, but let's come to that later. Yes, I think so. It would be so much fun to talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, um, and they, they, he convinces them that he's on their side and they start to train him because he is German and non-Jewish. Mm -hmm. They start to train him uh, into acting like an SS officer so he can in infiltrate Odessa. The Odessa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Which takes quite a time because we skip to a mountainside um, where he trains with like a really crazy bald guy. In an SS boot camp. <laughs> yes, basically, yeah, he, he went through boot camp for that, for that... <laughs> SS, uh, for all that stuff. Yeah, and he, I don't know. Yeah, it's a weird SS training montage. Well, I, I said weird. that while, while we looked at it. But it, it was very thorough except for the shooting part. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah. The he, shooting. Yeah, yeah, really shitty shooting. Mm. Again, why would give him a revolver in the first place? I don't know. But then again, don't shake the bullet out of it. Yeah, he, yeah, he he's like he he's like he has like some spastic movement, like yeah. he he has some disability, and he's like can't hold gun properly. 
<laughs> I was like, maybe the revolver doesn't work anymore. Oh yeah, so yeah. So it just has to do. Yeah, he sh- yeah, just rattle it. Mechanic movement. <laughs> yeah. Some force feedback. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he gets he gets um, some uh, non-intrusive um, plastic enhancements, I guess, to his eyelids to make him older, to mm-hmm. make him fit the person that he tries to impersonate, which is an SS officer at that Riga. No, at another Nazi camp, so mm-hmm. not to arouse suspicion. Yeah. And they. Um, yeah, they basically push him into Odessa. Into Odessa's fangs. And basically into the headquarters, if you will. And here ha- we have one of the most intriguing bureaucracy scenes of all time. Oh, yes. <laughs> because there was like a solid five minutes of questioning, I yeah. think, right? And checking the facts and really going through. Like, Nowadays, movies don't give give a fuck about that fact finding. No, they just give you like one shot, and then you have to assume that everything happened the right way. Yeah, and somebody turns around and is like t- saying to the main guy, "Yes, he checks okay. out" or something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's like, "Whew," and that's it. But they really build up the suspense here, and he gets really nervous, and, and he you gets see him even sweating. Get, and he yes, and he gets him asked if he's is if if he's nervous and everything mm-hmm. and he's like yes and he really covers that up by saying yes he was very anxious the last few weeks mm-hmm. and everything and that he need that's why he's here in the first place and everything and he amazing amazingly mm-hmm. done i think and they um his backstory basically checks out because the the Mossad and him really were thorough with the backstory and then peter slips up later on because he first gets the address to the forger and uh, he drives, f- he takes the train through Munich. And he calls his girlfriend. Yes. Sorry, his non wife. Yes, yeah, his non wife. Yeah. He calls his non wife, which is like the most stupid thing to yeah, do. Yeah. Because they, they, I don't know, does he at that moment already know that his phones are tappable? He must know that. I mean, he must at least assume it. Yeah. Of course, he doesn't live in our age when you believe that they hear everything. Everything, yes. <laughs> but still. yeah, you had some confidence in the in the in the. <laughs> yeah, in the, he had some confidence in the system, but then yeah. again, he was there when they did the background check, right? And all the telephone calls and like everything, and he would know that they are so thorough with it. Yeah. So why would they not listen to his phone? Again, calls? he fucks up, but he also really misses her. And he tells yeah. her that he that he loves her mm-hmm. as well, which was a really uh, unbelievable moment, I guess, for but a bit. It makes a round character, so yes, uh, basically yes. it's a cool move. Yeah, because he's still I don't know. Um, there's still a fight in inside of him, I think. Yeah, if certainly. he should just throw the whole agenda out and go back to his girlfriend, basically, and forget about the whole incident. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And then he goes to the forger. Um, oh, I love that scene. And the forger already knows that he is not the person not that the he one. claims to be. That it, like his cover is already blown. But the assassin is not here yet. He was too early. That's the problem with the efficiency of the German Deutsche Bahn. <laughs> the Deutsche Bahn is always on the uh, <laughs> will yes. arrive always on time. Yeah. The assassin is too early and the barn is in delay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he, he's already here. And the, the, the forger tries to tell him that the photographer is not here. So, like, it's he finds out an excuse him. that yeah. he has to stay for a few days. And then the assassin gets there, finally, at midnight, around midnight. And, oh, we find out that he has a sick mother which yeah. we f- first thought was just an excuse but was really no, a thing it was a thing yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and the forger um, sets the trap by telling him he can come in and and he shows the most German reaction ever he says it's past midnight yeah and first he's, yeah. he's all about it's so urgent I yeah. really need that passport oh no please I want to and he now. said that the hotel is 300 meters away yeah it's not even far he that's like, like a what a 5 minute walk yeah. a 10 minute walk when you're really slow you're and really smell slow. the roses you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah and he's like nah I'm already in my bed it's so comfy <laughs> 
<laughs> the Nazi Empire can wait. Uh, yeah, <laughs> fuck my passport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can flee tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's flee tomorrow. <laughs> Peter Müller, definitely the laziest. The laziest the, German yeah. of all time. Oh, but I mean, uh, no, I felt like he was not basically just lazy. It was more like, you don't do this kind of thing. Oh, you yeah. don't call somebody after midnight. Oh, That's the that, German yes. thing about yeah, it. Yeah, you, you, that, you just don't. No, you yeah. just don't. Yes, you just don't. Except if, you, except if you're poor, because I think you had better rates at night. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like after 10, you can call somebody for cheaper back then. But otherwise, yeah, you don't want to be a poor person, basically. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, okay. So he... Um, he senses something, Miller. Yeah. And, and he, he calls still again. wants to go there. Yeah, yes. but he calls and nobody picks up because yeah. the forger already left. And the and assassin, assassin waits. Is waiting. Yeah. And, and that assassin is stupid. But so stupid. Müller is also very stupid, not taking the dagger with him. Yes. Yeah. Because he has there, a there, dagger. There's incompetence on both sides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Because the assassin sits... Okay, he sits behind the machine, which is fine. It covers part of him. Mm-hmm. But there's like 5,000 different windows into that room... Like, even the, the, the office next door has huge glass pans, which you can just look through. Panoramic view of yes, the Yes, and he sits mm-hmm. in the middle of the room, facing the door, thinking, oh yeah, he's German, he must pass through the door. He would never look into a window. No, no, that's naughty. Not a German thing yeah, to do. That's yeah. very naughty. It's, yeah. naughty. it's like calling someone after midnight. It's yes, something it, yeah, you don't do. Like, yeah, like, the biggest hindrance, I think, is social interaction. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. that's that's why John that's why Peter is so excelling because he breaks those conventions sometimes. Oh, he's such a naughty guy. Yes, and that helps him stay alive like mm-hmm. for the most part of the movie. <laughs> yeah, he 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 um ah yeah, in the meantime sometimes in between his uh girlfriend gets f- threatened. Yeah, we forgot that. Yeah, but, eh, and, that was and again, insi- again long movie. She's very Till the end, very insignificant. Unfortunately. Yes, it, because she was a cool character. In yeah, Tohu. they could have made a bigger than that. Yeah, so, um, 70s. But maybe they didn't get uh, Maria Schell to play her. Maybe. And then maybe they would have made her, the character bigger. But yeah. when she said no... She then was they were way like, more okay, famous at that no. point. Maria Schell was way more famous than mm-hmm. the girl who played Sigi. Mm-hmm. Which the which name I already way. escapes me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already forgot your name, sorry. Even though you were a good actress. Good crying scene too. Mm. Yeah. But. Um, so he, he actually sees the assassin in yes. there. Yes. By then being pull- sneaky. By being sneaky. Yeah. And then he pulls the lever. So. The oh, no, no. He, he checks out the, the grandma by accident. Oh, yeah. He does that first. Yeah. Right. And yeah. the grandma. Well, the mother of the forger is actually very afraid about the life of her son and wants to basically rescue him and tells uh which she does effectively in in the end she does yes yes. she Mm -hmm. kind of saves her son yeah because uh miller finds uh the combination to the to the safe and he after a very intense cat and mouse scene we we uh he dispatches of the of the assassin by pushing him down uh the, through one the of roof, those windows. Yeah, through the glass which roof. Which is also glass. And yeah. he falls on the paper machine, paper cutting machinery and gets impaled. Uh, well, I guess even the fall would have killed him or at least broken yeah, multiple so. bones. So he would have been dead either way. They just went for overkill there. Yeah, they did. That was the only gory scene even till the end. Like, that was the only they, time where they really showed blood and everything. Yeah, they had a bottle of ketchup, which was already in the budget. And yeah. And thought, okay, guys, we have to <laughs> Yeah, yeah we, this. we have to, some condiments over there for, yeah. the, for, for, for the crew. For the, for the, Hot sauce, anyone? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some Tabasco over there and, like, sprinkle some, 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 some anti-rust coloring on there, too, to make the fakest looking blood in the universe. Mm-hmm. In the history of movies. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. really fake, fake, fake fake blood mm-hmm. uh, you get way better results by mixing red wine with ketchup one by four i think is the ratio really? yeah then you okay. get like a 
thicker yeah. substance, but you get the redness from mm-hmm. the from the, the wine. wine. Yeah. Yeah, which looks like closer to blood. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Super cheap. Why too. didn't they ask you? I don't know. Oh. I wasn't alive. Back then. <laughs> I think Maybe that I that was the mistake that they did. They should have made this movie now and had me on as a consultant because yeah. the the attention to the we're, we're going to yeah that's that's something we're going back to later. But again, he finds the Odessa file in the after dispatching of the assassin. Peter finds the files in the safe. Um, yeah. He uh, locks them up in Munich. In, uh, in, the, in the train station, in one of the lockers, rips out the one page that was important to the, to the, to the Mossad and him personally, and he... Um, Brings it to them. Yes, exactly. Then, but also tells them that he has some condition when it comes to the rest of the file, that they only would get it if he gets dibs on Roschmann. Yeah. That's that's his one condition that mm-hmm. he and that's where I kind of really got suspicious and that's yeah, because amazing because it's till the end of the it, movie it that takes it, a long time until you get that suspicious but yeah. for for a while you're wondering is he still behind that story because how is he gonna tell that story having done all the things I mean yeah. he actually has blood on his hands by now yeah so you would think that yeah. It's kind of not about the story anymore. No, no, totally not. Yeah, the, uh, the cops weren't involved up to this point. He's still in those clandestine meetings with the with the with the Mossad and everything. And then he we have a very cool sneaking into the complex scene. Oh, before that, he talks to his girlfriend and gives her the key to the locker, to like as a backup in case that yeah. he fails. The rest of it will be released. That was it, like his yeah. backup plan, and that's where he, she comes into play for like five seconds. Mm. They have sex in between scenes. Very yeah. lame. Very lame. You yeah. just see the no. Right they off. teased <laughs> because they teased her like in the middle of the movie where she is in the shower. She's naked. Yeah. She's in the shower. They teased that, uh. and they didn't deliver. I'm very disappointed. Movie. <laughs> very disappointed. But I'm blaming that. I'm not blaming that on the Germans. I'm definitely blaming that on the English studio who cut the movie. Yeah. I'm definitely blaming that on them. Probably. Yeah. In the German version must have been in there. Hmm. In the German version must have been in there. Yeah. Some. Uh, some they would have a had gratuitous a... boob shot or yeah, yeah. or or John White's penis at some point. Uh, certainly. Yes. Ah. Oh, ah. Like John Wild back then compared to now, you would have liked very to see his hot, penis. very okay. hot. Good Com- in comparison, definitely. <laughs> he is a guy who didn't age well. He has a very unique face now, but it's not a. It's like you know, some actors have that unique face that's very intriguing, mm-hmm. but and only hot for like zero point five percent of the population. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Um. So. He sneaks so, into the um, fair, I guess, the electronics fair. Yeah, we find out that Roschmann is now called what? Kiefel. Kiefel, Kiefel yeah. and works for Kiefel Electronics. Well, he is the boss he of Kiefel. He is Kiefel Electronics. Yeah, yes. and he looks like a boss too. With the comb over, the thick glasses, the, and the, the bad stomach, tie. the bad tie, the stomach, the uh-huh. protrudes. Like everything about him says... Boss. Boss. Mm-hmm. With all the bad and positive connotations, <laughs> yeah. all of it, and he, uh, yeah, just follows him. He basically follows him, yes. Yeah, and finds out that Roshman, of course, lives in a fucking castle with a moat. Well, of course, he a lives wa- in a castle. A moat filled with water too. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ, can you get more paranoid? Yeah, but I, oh, I love it. Yeah, no, no, it looks really cool. Like for the last. Basically, for the last showdown, perfect scenery, basically. Mm. It's the closest you can get to, I'm a super villain without being an actual super villain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. And I love how he... Because as a private person back then, you could have bought a castle, probably, if you were really, really rich. Yeah, sure, you could have. Yeah. And then he climbs into the castle. I love that scene. Oh, yeah. He's like hiding under the bridge. Very and sneaky. And the police car. And yeah. The, ooh. Yeah, very suspenseful. And then he's alone with Roschmann and we have the showdown I really I don't know I have seen scenes like that but I think back then that was something very novel that they talk to each other that much you think yeah 
They, yeah. they, they, they had Pavlov's gun in there as well. Mm, yeah. I by, by introducing it at the beginning. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you look at the, just the, like the, the, the conversation they have as three scenes. Confrontation. Uh, then at the middle you have like a conflict basically where, mm-hmm. where he tries to defend himself. And then the end where he lies and tries to weasel himself out the whole thing and where he uses the gun. Mm-hmm. Like you have those three segments. I think that was yeah. very nicely done. That was some superb screenwriting, I think. I think at least. It was. And yeah. also it gives you the, um, well, it, it gives you the question as a viewer, what would you do in a situation like that? Yeah. Because eventually after all those weeks, finally you found the person you're looking right. for. And you yeah, want to- you totally know also that there was a transition of time. Like there yeah. were, were weeks and weeks of training and, and finding out where the forger is and all that stuff that took time back then. And yeah, you, they, he took the train, he never took the plane. So he mm-hmm. wasted a day each Getting for all. A to B. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and you you find yourself with the question, do I shoot that person or not? Yeah. Because you accuse somebody of having killed 80,000 people. And then in the end, does it make sense to kill them? Yes. Yeah. But then again, if he you- says, uh, 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 Roshman actually says, he you call butchering me, butcher. me, wouldn't that make you a butcher as well? Yeah. Yeah. And he, Peter starts with, no, you're not human. You're mon. He, he doesn't he finish, finish monster because because he he um, interrupts him while that happens. Yeah, amazing. I think mm-hmm. like the, the last scene. Uh, well, it was the last real scene for the plot at least. Yeah, the rest was just closing arguments. Mm-hmm. I guess. <laughs> so Pretty much. What yes. happened since then? Yeah. Yeah, and he. And we find out the real yeah. reason why right. he's so much oh, yes. into yeah. that person. Finally, a satisfying big reveal why he was so driven to get to uh, Roshman, why it was such a personal thing for him. And that is that he finally finds out who his dad is. The basically. man killed by Roshman in Riga. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the Wehrmacht commandant. Mm-hmm. So it was basically personal revenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he doesn't want to shoot him at the end. He but doesn't he, really want it. Yeah, no. but, but, but the other guy, uh, Roshman, forces him to by pulling out a gun. And bam, he has, compared to his first shooting, in he the, has in the grown. first, he, he has <laughs> improved like to Han Solo levels yeah. because he turns around, shoots from his hip, yeah. hits, like, does a non-lethal blow, but enough to deflect the, the other shot that the Charman does and the, the, the bullet just whizzes by him. Like that was out of so much fucking luck or expertly, like he was trained to, to a degree by the Mossad where he was just that intuitive about gun control. Probably just luck. Yeah, but probably. But yeah. still, cool scene. Still cool scene. Especially yes. because Roshman doesn't give up and pulls the gun again against Peter, who is then forced to really go for the killing blow by just overkilling him at that point. Like he empties all the bullets into him. And then he gets locked up, released after three weeks without charges because something, something. Something, something. Yeah, Nazis. Yeah. And the Odessa files are released and uh, the Kiefel electronics. Oh yeah, right. It's burned. Yeah, and the Mossad's whole thing in there is also to prevent because Kiefel was the guy who made the system the guidance system for the rockets that was his job oh yeah right yeah, yeah that was that the was whole also his, uh, yeah 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 mm-hmm. so Israel is Israel safe Israel is safe yeah and also uh, Solomon Tauber gets a proper burial yeah exactly in Israel and his best friend uh, reads the what's his name <laughs> reads his eulogy, I guess. Yeah. I don't and know what the Jewish an, eulogy is. It's an like, excerpt ah, from his uh, diary. I should, I should know the Yiddish word for that. Um, yeah. L'chaim? No. Well, totally wrong. Up. Totally wrong. Yeah. Um, Learn something. But, but I think we're done with plot. We're done with plot. <gasps> and that only, only, took only, an hour. only, <laughs> well, yeah, close to an hour. Whee! All right. Uh, let's move Wonderful. on. Let's move on to Cinematography. Oh yes. There was some super 
superb shots in there. Oh yes, they were. Really well done. And I don't know if that's... Well, that's definitely also just the, the level of detail that they put into things back then. But also I think um, the digital remaster. Because this is a digitally remastered edition. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we have some... That's why it looks so good on a mm. digital screen as well. I think. Because, damn, is the, this is a nice movie. It has the old 2.21 2. by 1 scale, I think. Like with the black bars mm-hmm. on top, of, on, 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 top on, on, on the bottom. You have... Oh, I really loved... So what was your favorite shot? Oh, my favorite shot. That's yeah. really hard to say. But I, I think I, I like the scene most uh, where he tries to, well, um, kill the assassin. Or well, oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. don't know if he tries to. Well, he actually yeah, tries the to Yeah, the lighting. Kill him, but the lighting the, is perfect yeah. there. And also, you have these so many different angles. So, oh, yeah. Um, You're always confused until they show yeah, you the, 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 whole the main shot, yeah. which they did when, when it was basically from the view of of him Mm -hmm. until he uh, loses his first battle against the assassin the assassin chases after him and then the camera angle basically switches to the assassin yeah and you don't know what happens to to uh peter in the meantime and then you see how peter sneaks around the assassin Ah, so that was that was really really well done and it's so it creates so much uh suspension and you're yeah. really you, it's not a point of view shot at any moment but then yeah. it's a point of view shot yes because you always feel like you're right there and yeah they really yeah. draw you in so totally yeah, totally like that very much and then we had also they they, they used minimal cuts they, I love they, that they, too. they tried oh. to keep scenes as long as they could between people dialogue was sometimes shot even on the same screen which is always more work because of framing that sounds all that stuff that takes way more work to do a scene with with all them included reshoots I mean, and yeah, that stuff. Yeah, we, we have to take into consideration that that was just the 1970s style, but it's so oh. nice to watch something like that. It was again. superbly made for the time. Yeah, definitely, but certainly, and and also it's like the movies we have nowadays. There, there were so many cuts and everything yeah. was just Chopped reduced up. to a minimum, mm. and you're like, "Wow, oh my God, leave me alone!" Yeah, I mean, we're already used to that, but when you watch that's a movie why, like that, that again, it's that's so why, for example, oh. I'm I'm really taken by um, what was the movie that uh, Don't Lena, say the Revenant. Lena, the Revenant is very well shot. It's very well opinion. shot. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's true. Yeah. They 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 have amazing chase scenes with long shots and everything that yeah. are just one scene and stuff like that. And even if they're using digital effects, it you know, it doesn't fuck with your mind. Mm-hmm. I I really like that up, uh, about The Revenant, but he's again a rare breed nowadays mm-hmm. compared to other movies, comedies, action movies. They all nowadays have this crazy cutting where you yeah. have like a fight scene where you have 18 different angles yeah. all of them a half a second long and you don't know who fights who yeah. what connects to what here you have a clear picture all the way through yeah you always know and it again it mostly follows follows peter and then when it detracts from him it goes to to still doesn't feel i don't know like still feels like his story like he's the main character he's yeah, the most sense. important center of the whole thing and it all revolves around him i really like that and also you you need these shots because yes the plot is complex yeah and you really need to follow yeah and if you had too many cuts in there it would fuck it all up yeah because totally it, in yeah. the, the, if you narrate it like that you you actually get a good picture of what is going on and also the yeah. acting contributes to that because everything is very clearly not always well yeah. acted but yeah you always <laughs> knew clear. what happens you, yeah. you were never confused yeah. and if you were confused it was deliberate by the yeah. by the movie itself mm-hmm. just how it was built up and we have I think we have a really mo- really nice scene where he drives on the German autobahn and you have the sunrise. Oh yes. And oh, and the, like the, one, the, huh? the, the the music kicks in. That was after yeah. he killed the assassin and drives away in that really nice sports cars of his. Mm-hmm. And that just looked amazing. Oh yes. Especially because the the shots, the, the outdoor shots, weren't really 
distinguishable from the indoor shots when it came to lighting or stuff like that. Like they they still pulled out all the colors, even it was even it wasn't a, a bright day. Like where he climbed under the oh, under yeah. the bridge. Uh, many other seventies movies, you wouldn't see anything at that mm -hmm. point. It's all <laughs> black, and you have like a face that moves through the whole thing. But they did really good work there. It, like the high praise to the cinematographer. Yeah. High praise. Like, I, and I really like the use of colors in general. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It's such a colorful movie. I really like that a lot, especially yeah. at the beginning where you see all that Christmas scenery. Right. The sets are all believable. They play with the lights so much. Yeah. It's like they're having fun with it. And yeah. I like that. The sets are all believable. Mm -hmm. Like you believe that this is uh, a police officer's uh, 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 um, home or, or whatever his job is. The guy who gave him Peter the file at the beginning. He visits him. Yeah. Also very good children. use of props, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, yeah, they, they 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 really went into detail here. Really went into the detail, like the insignias and the the way um, Nazis covered up their tracks mm -hmm. and and how they did it. And they for, the, the forged documents actually looked like they were from that time period and all yeah. that stuff. Like they they really pulled some the the use of the shilling, the appropriate use of the shilling, <laughs> yeah. which is. Not rarely seen in movies, <laughs> so I like that as well. Yeah, good um, research. Yeah, and that he get like, for example, that was a very nice detail where he gives uh, Ziggy um, the the file and the money to get to to Austria, to Munich, and then to Vienna to Simon Wiesenthal. He actually gives her German marks and shilling. Really? Yeah, like there were different banknotes ah, in there. No, I didn't. That's notice. amazing piece of That's detail. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Like somebody really paid attention to the whole thing. Like they had a, a, their own research guy. That was in the Probably. main now no, in the main, main titles they had a guy. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. So they so actually a consultant on on all the yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really nicely done. Again, there wasn't there wasn't anything crazy. Like they didn't have a, a a crazy dolly shot or a crazy swivel shot where you like. No, but that wasn't necessary. No, I think no. no, that would have spoiled it. Yeah, it's a thriller movie that just ha has to visualize what's happening basically, and then lead the the, the viewer into wrong directions or mm -hmm. keep him guessing and stuff yeah. like that. And I, I think it really accomplishes that. I am kind of sad that they did that weird cut between the Israel scene and the starting scene, basically, of him being in, in Germany. Why did you not like that? Because it was too abrupt. They, they didn't... You would have well, they, they had Well, they had, they had the text. Yeah. And you, I was like, oh, we have tanks there, so at least have them shoot or do anything or mm. uh, have something to make the conflict more, more realistic, more feelable, like... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like a real war scene. Yeah. Not exa just yeah. A, oh, we're in a tent and everything's cozy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To have something there yeah. at least. And then they just switch and never go back to those characters or anything. Like they discard them immediately. Yeah. And I, I thought that was, it was okay to establish where the sides were and what's happening from a historical standpoint. But otherwise, eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But otherwise, amazing. Nothing that really bothered me the special effects again well the only thing we had were the blood sp spatter from the bullets <laughs> and that was okay it was yeah, okay it's, it's not so things like that don't bother me that much if the plot is well told yeah and we have that here yeah we definitely have mm -hmm. that here yeah oh yeah and that he's reading build as a yeah as a, <laughs> as, a, as a as a no because he he describes himself basically as a proto tmc journalist mm -hmm. by saying he just needs one shot of a of of a corpse or some somebody being gunned down and he would make two million marks yeah and that really shows the profits oriented money side of him yeah and I mean, that he, he doesn't to. have and doesn't have the moral to not sell such such exploitative pictures to the build site, for example, yeah. which is very interesting, I think, that makes makes him morally ambiguous, I guess, like not like the, not the the American monolith of 
this is right, this is wrong, and yeah. there's no in between. No, I love it how you feel that that he's an idealist, but then at the same time he's out of money and he really yeah. has to a pragmatist as well. Yeah. He has to be mm -hmm. pragmatic as well. Yeah, very well done. Um, let's move on to sounds. Sound. Yes. Wow. Um, you could hear everybody in this movie. That's not usual for outdoor scenes and stuff like that back then. Really hard to shoot some of that stuff. And I think, at least I only noticed one ADR line where somebody recorded over himself uh, later on yeah. because the lips mm -hmm. weren't in sync yeah. with the audio file. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Uh, I, I only noticed it once. And otherwise... Okay. Yeah. No, everybody. It's what my the parents, German accent is weird. It's weird. It's very weird. But it's what my parents always say. That they, they always say that the new movies they don't understand them anymore because everybody's mumbling. And I'm like, no, guys, you're turning deaf. <laughs> but, um, that might except, be true to a certain extent. Except but, for Tom Hardy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But then again, if I watch a movie like this, yeah. I do notice what they mean because um, in in those times everybody had a, a good education about speech. And, yes. And everybody would classically things. theatrical yeah. education. Mm -hmm. And I do like that about the movie too. Yeah. Especially when the plot is that complex, <laughs> mm -hmm. so you have to follow them. Yeah, you can't miss yeah. m many details, otherwise you're be getting lost mm -hmm. very quickly. Yeah. And. And I loved it that they hardly used any music. Oh my oh, god, yes. I loved it so much. Yes. Because in so many scenes where there was such a high suspense, yeah. and then you, ha you, you had no music at all, and you right. still you could feel it so much. Yeah. And I feel that nowadays they try to. You were, you were actually like, there was, there's going to be a jump scare now. There's yeah. going to be a jump scare now. And I'm like, I'm like, and I was, I'm, I'm also, I'm also so bitter now about about movies, especially horror movies and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, there's probably going to be one, and then there wasn't one. Yeah, which was really nice. I, I, know. I really like that. <laughs> well, like, oh shit, you can still do a movie. Like, Without okay, you, that? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and still be suspenseful mm. and not rely on the cheapest trick in the book. Wow, amazing. Yeah. We're, wow. we're used to something so cheap. Yes. Yeah. And this was not cheap at all. No. They they really put effort into the whole thing. And um then we have and we have sound where where well not where it's needed, but I guess where it belongs. Mm -hmm. Like you have it in the car. Every yeah. time you drive. Every time in the you car. drive you hear music. Yeah. Yes. Then you have uh a bit of music before where he's still climbing the castle, but he's already inside. Yeah. And and you feel uh, that they really, really uh, kept themselves in check by not using that music in the suspenseful scenes before. Mm -hmm. But here it was totally, I thought it was totally cool because like it shows you, this is the big finale. Yeah. This is where it ends. It prepares this you is, a little. Yeah, this is where shit goes down. Yeah. <laughs> But I still must say I wouldn't have needed it there. Yeah, but they cut it out in the moment because I think it would, like, it shows the excitement in, in Peter. Like, mm -hmm. he's so close. Like, yeah. so close. He, 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 he doesn't know at that moment. Does he shoot him? Doesn't he, does he confront him? Does he, does he doesn't do, doesn't he do anything? Like, he doesn't know at that point. That's, like, why this music is so crazy yeah. and upbeat and, like full of energy like the testosterone in his system and mm -hmm. then when he is confronted by the butcher he's like everything falls down and the music disappears immediately mm -hmm. and i think that was really cool really yeah. cool yeah it was because it, it showed also the, the the confusion in his own mind mm -hmm. yeah so i'm not that bitter about that <laughs> i actually like it but you again you your own human being you can you can have your own opinion and, that, mm -hmm. and that's fine no i mean it was cool i just i, I wouldn't have needed it yeah that's okay just the thing like yeah yeah it could have done without right yeah but i see what you mean yeah, yeah. it's it's it certainly in that movie music always goes with a higher tempo like oh yes with a higher pace mm -hmm. um especially driving a car of course and then yeah. also it creates some relief of a certain kind because uh, we have some sad scenes in here. Yeah, you have these some intense sad, scenes. And then sad, sad scenes. That, yeah. that, that even though they're not that well acted, the, the concentration camp scenes were not easy to watch. No, it's not. Yeah. I find that very interesting sometimes. Because you can fuck up concentration camp scenes. Oh, like yes, a lot of can. movies don't 
they make you feel bad maybe but they don't they don't transport the real horror of it yeah. and, and they they for for that time they they mm-hmm. did a pretty like this is 20 years before Schindler's List yeah Schindler's List I think is still the gold standard when it comes to that when it I haven't seen it oh okay it's fine I've read the book it's amazing okay yeah the book is really good the movie is also you know the, the bad thing about that is uh, it's a movie that of course is on my list yeah <laughs> I really have to watch it one day but then again when you there sit are at so home, many movies yeah and then you sit you at home and you're like watch. oh I would like to watch a movie yeah let's watch Schindler's like, List because I'm so it, in the mood yeah, for it <laughs> yeah that's like the <laughs> you 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 put on some 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 nice reggae music yeah <laughs> Yeah, some nice reggae music. Yeah, you pu- pull out your bong and like, yeah, let's chill and watch, watch Schindler's, Schindler's List. <laughs> I heard it's really good, man. Yeah. See, yeah, that's the thing why I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, totally get it. Mm. Um, I haven't seen Casablanca in total yet. Yeah, and it's still like half of the critics gush about yeah. it being the best movie of all times. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Just because it was first, yeah. <laughs> basically, <laughs> it's not fair. It's not fair. Uh, yeah. So um, I think we're done with we're sound. We're done with sound. Yeah, yeah. it was it was mm-hmm. really well done. That's, it was that's, good sound. Yeah, yeah, good good sound all around. And let's move on to best moments. What I was we your were gonna what do it, worst moments? <laughs> because again, yeah, there are some bad moments because they. Uh, such a high contrast to the rest of the quality of the movie like that's why you like yeah, th- why they stand out way more because my best moment definitely was the confrontation scene at the end yeah definitely okay like mm-hmm. those because it was three parts it 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 it, it had like a storyline basically in inside this last scene with a beginning a middle and an end and a resolution at the end and they Stick, stuck to the Pablo formula to have a gun at the beginning mm-hmm. that has to be used at the third act. I think just from that standpoint, really well done. And it it's the climax as well of the whole movie. You have you finally have uh, Rochman and he doesn't disappoint. Maximilian Schell plays Rochman and mm-hmm. he doesn't disappoint. Not like at all. that seedy, slimy. Yeah. That seems so sure of himself. Yes, yeah, yeah. so sure of himself, and so so maybe even believes his own lies. Like he might even be at that point where he talked himself into disbelieving his own actions so much that he's not even aware of them anymore, or or has pushed them so far in a corner, and and like or his duty thing like we were only following orders and everything like that Mm -hmm. he even though that's like the most cliche thing you can say as a nazi collaborator or a nazi member that's what they used to say and he delivered it perfectly absolutely like you it was oozing this fake nationalism Mm. to your own gain and your own fetishization of this murderous thoughts and everything it's amazing and having it all yeah. figured out for yourself yes and just you have to, the yeah. resolution that it's about peter's father just really well done yeah really well done yeah so so i'm i'm, I'm really i'm really smitten i'm really smitten <laughs> by this so yeah this this is definitely my best moment yeah but yeah for you uh my best moment i think was when he manages to kill the assassin and yeah. then he that gets out of kill. that house. Yeah. And I love it because that's the moment when you first think this is not about a story anymore. Yeah. And you're, but you're not being there a reporter. yet. You don't really uh, anticipate a twist. You, you mm. don't really think, oh, there must be something else. I mean, you do, but, but you're sort of caught in between. And I really like that when I'm not so sure about what's going on. Right. Where is that headed? Yeah. You know? That's what I really like. Yes, liked. that's the first time where you were rattled from that secure seat, basically, as a, yeah. as a viewer that mm-hmm. you were sitting in, where you were like, oh, yeah, this is just a straightforward uncovering the story film. Yeah. 
and but then, then you realize, it no. switches up and makes it really intriguing at that point. And yeah. I think also the acting was very good at that point because oh, yeah. you really see that he's becoming so obsessed with finding this person, and then some at some point somebody also says he's just one of so many, um, mm -hmm. which of course you would argue, well, I can only you know hunt one yeah <laughs> uh, but that's at least one that's, so that's it does not make a, sense that's too not, but yeah and uh, especially something somebody as powerful yeah and influential like he's imagined as a, apparently a leader of a cutting edge technology firm mm -hmm. that's basically what Keefler industries is uh Kiefler electronics is it's a really high end if you if you make missile guidance system back in the back in the uh, 60s You're or really 70s you are definitely on top of your game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there, there's no way around it. You have some transistor uh, factory power plant or something to make all that guidance. It, there, there has to be a lot of stuff in between. And so he has to be very powerful at that point. So getting rid of him is not only getting rid of a person, but getting rid of somebody really, yeah. really, really, really dangerous. And the cool thing is that in that moment you are so torn in between because you yeah. think that it it makes it's absolutely still murder. Pra pragmatic sense, yeah. but still you feel like, why is he so obsessed? Mm. Why is that personal uh, yeah. issue so important? So yeah, really, that's my best moment. Yeah. And your worst moment, we already, I, I already uh, know what your worst moment is because it's definitely also my worst moment. The kidnapping scene? Oh, no, oh, oh, <laughs> well, I guess, yes, but also the, uh, the, the concentration camp. Yeah, that people was who were falling over. Oh my god! That was really bad. Oh, that, that was, was really bad so because they bad. get shot in the head, and there, there's a ditch, and that ditch wasn't properly made, and the guy, uh, the, 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 one of the people who get us uh, like get killed he falls over in the slowest version yes. and you see that he's still straining his legs to like yeah make his fall slower and you're like ah come on dude yeah like just hit your face in the dirt Take like a you're, stunt duel you are for dead God's now sake. yes <laughs> your no central nervous system doesn't exist anymore yeah. your body stops working at that point just collapse and he's like no yeah. and he's doing like this weird move where he's like skimming himself into the ditch yeah and it's like they don't feel the shot even. You yeah. don't see the shot. It's yeah. so weird and it's sad because the first shot, when they shoot the first person, yeah. I found that's really intimidating. Like, yeah, and really the feel, oh yeah, and the last one also. And the last one also with the fake out. I know, but that those in between, you're like, oh, guys, please. Yeah. That was on. definitely the second team. Like yeah. they had a second team shooting those flashback scenes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the, the prime cinematographer wasn't there. Yeah. And uh, and this special effects guy or whoever and they yeah they just beefed it, they beefed it hard <laughs> with that one yeah again worst moment definitely but for you it was the kidnapping scene the kidnapping with scene the yeah 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 at the end no, uh, yes, no. yes 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 no not even that oh, one Jesus. I think sorry guys <laughs> sorry guys that was a bit loud <laughs> <laughs> no the uh, where they actually like he's standing there yeah there are four people in a car. They get, they all get out of the car. Yeah. Just one of them has a gun and just, you know, like casually, casually holds it in yeah. his hand. And then he climbs into the car voluntarily without any oh, that's threat German whatsoever. Law. That's German law back then. Okay. If you yeah. only hold your, uh, your gun casually, <laughs> it's fine. It's only when you hold it in a threatening manner that it gets illegal. <laughs> okay, maybe yeah. that's it. Because with those dainty hands, you can't shoot anybody. Yeah. You hurt your wrist. Ah. <laughs> and he climbs in and then all yeah. the others the kidnappers climb in with him and it looks like they're going on a holiday and they have this tiny car and it looks so ridiculous road trip yeah road trip oh you guys look nice yeah. and you even have a gun that's sweet yeah let's go awesome i looked for a gun the longest i was time. looking for a gun yeah. he actually took the gun with him oh yeah that's yeah, also a bad right. scene where he uh, leaves the silencer back in the hotel. Oh, yeah, why does and he leave the silencer? For the sneaky mission, he doesn't take the silencer with him. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a, yeah. a, a grave mistake on his part. And there were so many people or in this building. maybe he only trained, because you need special training to shoot properly with a silencer, because you have ah. weight issues with the balance and everything. Oh, okay. And he was, we only see him training with a normal revolver. Right. So I'm, he's, maybe he's more comfortable yeah, yeah shooting without a silencer okay 
Maybe that's the reason. Maybe but I'm, f- I'm, I'm looking for excuses at this uh. point. It would have been still smart to just take it with you and maybe put it on in case just you in need case. it. Just have just, it with you. Yeah, just in case. It's yeah. not that heavy. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 200, 300 grand. That's like, what, three chocolate bars? Yeah. Ooh, or one big chocolate bar in weight? Come on. But I- also, I wonder, there, was so, there were other people in that castle. Mm-hmm. Whatever happened to them? Did he shoot them too? How you mean Werner, for example? Yeah, Werner. For, Werner, sorry. Werner. 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 <laughs> wow. They speak with German accents and yeah. then they don't pronounce their own names, names correctly. correctly. Yeah. Franz and Werner. Franz and Werner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Edward. 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 I think they, they even they call him Edward. Edward, Edward Roschmann and Edward. then Peter Miller. They, yeah. Siggy is, I think, the only one. They don't Siggy is pronounced correctly. Yeah, b- but only because it's a shortening mm-hmm. of the real name. Mm-hmm. Sieglinde, I guess. Probably Sieglinde. Yeah. She won't be called Siegfried. Siegfried. <laughs> And next up is Siegfried. Divi- was she in Division Siegfried, maybe? <gasps> no. No, no. No. Nah, oh, nah. That, oh, I'm quite that, sure that, that she was. That would have been, that would have been cool, but no. That's <laughs> such a... That would have been cool, but... 50th layer. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like peeling one more down. And it, oh, it doesn't... There's another layer of Nazi. Who would have thought? <laughs> She's also a Nazi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think we, we closed up our best, best moment arguments and worst moments, I guess. And um, mm-hmm. let's go on to a secret category. And that's... Uh, uh, Apply water to this burn, please. Apply water to this burn? Yeah, because we have a few scenes where either Peter or somebody else gets burned hard. Mm -hmm. Literally and figuratively. Yeah. We have first, we have his girlfriend making free riffs about him not being good looking enough to be a male stripper. (laughs) She's not such earning enough. No, he she's cool. I thought that was cool. Like it's kind of cool, but she's also but he's, such a he's bitch. a bitch. He's a bitch for not he he, for not um, going with the flow and just burning her. Yeah, true. That's what he sh- what he he's just like. Mm, mm, I'm tr- like, I'm just gonna angry <laughs> angrily pour me some coffee mm, <laughs> and have breakfast. That was his reaction to the yeah, whole okay. thing. So that I, I thought that was a really solid burn. Like what what did what did she say? Um, that he's not good en- good enough. Nobody would pay you to strip. Get naked. Yes, yes, get naked. Yeah, yeah. And, and she says something like, "At least I get paid for what I do." Yes, yeah. he doesn't. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and that he gets paid way more as well. And then there was a third. While well, he was already leaving the yeah, he's room. He's already leaving the room and she already... <laughs> and she goes for the... Th- she like, just doesn't yeah. leave it. Yeah, Yeah, leave it there. Which made me... Made her very endearing, I thought. And cool. In my, f- in my mind. Like, she's a really progressive, cool... I don't take no shit from any, anybody else. Girl. Yeah, but if you're a stripper, I think you have... To have those arguments. Oh yeah, 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 totally. At any time, right? Because you're going to get confronted with it so many Probably. times. Probably. So. Yeah. 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 We have that. Then we have. Uh, um, what was it? Uh, about the the, the 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 Austrian postal officer said something to John White about uh, to Peter oh, yeah. about about the hundred chilling. Like he yeah, he made something like. Mm, Uh, he, he made quite a cool remark there. Yeah. Uh, about, about, uh, I don't remember. Yeah. That one was really good. Um, what else? There, were, there, were, there was something else, definitely. Uh, hmm. Damn. Uh, I can't find it right now. <laughs> uh, I guess the... the It was just a good quote was when she was like, I'm gonna go with you. And he's like, no. And she's like, but I don't, uh, do I have to wait? And he, he's like, yes. And she's like, I don't know if, I, if I'm still here. And he's like, please be. <laughs> please be. Yeah. Please be here. <laughs> End of scene. He leaves. 
that's it. Please be here. <laughs> He's not the most masculine character. Nope, nope, definitely not. And, but that's also fine. That's also fine. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's hero in part, but he's also a bit of a yeah split personality. Yeah, he's, he's a little split. Yeah, mm-hmm. you could say that. Any other burns you remember? Oh well, yeah, they physically they physically burn him by uh, re- fake removing a tattoo. Mm-hmm. And Kiefer Electronics. Yes, they burn down the whole thing. Arson. Right. Yes. Anything else? Fire seems to be a, um, a pattern. Theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this movie. Yeah. yeah. What was the file? There was there was something. The, didn't the grandma say something? Oh yeah, she thought he was a priest. She thought he was a priest. It, right. We totally skipped that. That yeah, was a that great was so scene. So cool because it really happened by accident. Yeah, I, because I don't he had think a he white. Intended that. Yeah, he had a black, smart, a yeah. black suit on, a black. Black jumper. something, and then a white jumper under it. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. right. Uh, so, uh, a turtleneck, so cool. and, and of that, course he and that, know that looked like a bit, especially to uh, an old woman who probably has problems with her, her with her sight. Yeah, she thought that her her um, son sent for a priest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she divulges all the information to him. I think that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. that was a good scene. Yeah. And he couldn't have known that she, that there was an old lady there. No, nope. so it was all it was just such a good coincidence. Yes, yes, amazing. Uh, something else? I don't know. Hmm. Nah. <laughs> nah. 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 Mm. No more burns, I think. <laughs> no more this, burns. No more burns in this movie. Anything else that burned down or? Nah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> done. Done. Um. Again, a very serious movie in general. Yes. Yeah. The fun that we had with this movie derived from us yeah. being being Wanting very uncomfortable fun. and like trying to have a silver lining, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So oh, this is already a long, mo- uh, long episode. So let's move on to final conclusion. Ooh. Yes. So. We already said that during during the review and everything during the episode that this is an excellent movie. It is an excellent movie. It I'd is recommend an excellent it to movie. anybody. Yeah, exactly. That those are my basic questions. Would you recommend this movie? Would you watch it again? And if so, uh, how would you recommend people watch it? Um, like I think this would be amazing on the great on the silver screen. Like in a cinema mm-hmm. with an original film role. Yeah, that would that, be so cool. That would be amazing. That would be really but cool. But also to watch it at home, that's also fine. I mean, yeah. it, you, you have to be in the right mindset, though. Yeah. Don't, you, don't expect a comedy. Yeah. Well, yes, definitely. <laughs> Obviously def- not. Definitely don't expect a comedy. Don't make a drinking game out of it. <laughs> just watch it sober and 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 just be intrigued, I guess. Even though we, if you if you if you listen to this podcast, you either watch the movie already or. Uh, now we, we spoiled, totally spoiled, spoiled it all you. of it, but still, still, even for the cinematography and the sound editing, and just to see how superbly a movie can be made back then, um, just watch it for that, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, it, it's a really cool movie, and also I wouldn't, don't expect a Nazi movie, no. not a Third Reich movie, because no. it's really not about that so much. I mean, of course it is, and it's kind yes. of cool to have that whole theme about how. Um, the former SS officers still remain in every higher position. Yes. I mean, we all know that, but yeah. it's really cool. And it how is they, based on true events too. With it is based on true events. Yeah. And, and then it's, it's just good how they show that this was a, a real problem back then. And so mm-hmm. many things still evolved is. because of it. And the, the RAF evolved because of that problem. Yeah. So uh, it explains history a lot, but still it's not so much about history. It's a thriller mm-hmm. and a really yeah. good one too. Yes. So definitely recommend... Um, yeah, watch it with friends. I, I don't, don't watch it alone. Yeah, don't watch it alone. Yeah. That's that's definitely. If you have like a thriller night or something like that, mm-hmm. not not the Michael Jackson one. <laughs> 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 have uh, like a thriller movie night, then definitely that's something you can pull up there. And uh, again, having Simon Wiesenthal in there and and all that stuff to make like to, to show it from each side what what's happening and having. Uh, Roschmann defend himself at the end is a very realistic and nice addition to the whole thing and yeah just a very well-rounded well-crafted movie I think absolutely yeah 
All right, I think we're done here. We're done. We're done. Finally. <laughs> Nearly as long as the movie. Um, <laughs> so, uh, where can people find you? Where are your internet things? Where you have some 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 events coming up? So this is gonna be probably out in three weeks. Just so okay, for your so, plugs. Yeah. All so, right, perfect. Yes, plug away. So uh, you can find me on soniapicard.com. Link in the um, description below. I hope so, and also on my Facebook site. Sonia Pickard comedian yeah Ooh, nice and nice huh yeah. um, well there are not that many Pickards around right I, I doubt it yeah especially not that many comedians with that name yeah, so, yeah. female comedians still more of a rarity than male comedians yeah. ones so also yeah mm -hmm. that additional layer as well <laughs> yes and Certainly. again link is in the description below yeah. and also I have a uh, longer stand-up comedy showcase coming up on 18th of April at Kulturverein Chokhal in the 15th district so that's gonna 18th be fun 18th of April that's cutting it close it might not it might, might not be out okay. yet yeah and think um, think think May <laughs> okay <laughs> so 20th of May I will have a show at Grind oh in nice. English yes uh, I think that's with uh, four other comedians cool cool we don't know yet who's gonna be there but it's gonna be awesome and Sweet. Yeah. show up uh, yeah so, yeah the yeah. Grind the Grind has very nice seats the beers yeah, it's a nice price. Priced accordingly. Reasonably priced. Reason priced. Reasonably Absolutely. priced. And yeah. it's just a nice ambiance. The, 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 the old movie posters really, really get me in the grind. Yeah, they, right. they are really cool. I love them. Yeah. And also, uh, 27th of May, I will do my entire show, uh, which is in German, but mm -hmm. if you guys are German, right. uh, you should come to uh, Theater im Eisergrund. Yes. So, yeah. That's, that's a May. really nice theater. That was my main theater where I had stage time back in the days when really? I did cabaret. Yeah. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah, because yeah, I do most of my shows there. Yeah. And, uh, I love it's, it there. It's, it's so amazing because you have those this really intimate feeling, but you yeah. still can fill it with like 80 to 100 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 really cool. Yeah, really one of the best small theaters in Vienna. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. All right, so check out, I guess, extra plug for Theater Malzagrund. <laughs> yes. Uh, check out Theater Marzikon. They always have great shows there. Um, thank you again for being here. Maybe we have you thank on you. again, hopefully. Maybe with somebody else. That would be cool. Like do a threesome episode. That would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, uh, till the next time, guys. Bye. Bye.